Okay, today we're going to take a look at something called the optimally pulled block. And all this is is a block sitting on a level surface, which we're going to pull, as the name implies. Now this block has some mass M, and we're going to pull on this block in such a way that we maximize the horizontal acceleration of the block. Now, it's important to realize we're going to pull on this block at an angle with some force F. So if F is given and M is given, we want to figure out what the angle we need to pull on this block needs to be to maximize this acceleration. Now, at first you might think, well, obviously we just pull horizontally. If we pull horizontally, we're going to maximize the force in the X direction and therefore maximize the acceleration of the block. And that is true, except we're going to put some friction here. All right, there's going to be some friction, and that is the result of kinetic friction between the block and the ground. I'm not so concerned with static friction here and getting this block going. We're just talking about once we get this block moving, what's the right angle to pull? So here's what's happening in this problem. If we pull horizontally on the block, yes, we're maximizing the force horizontally, but by pulling slightly upward, we can affect the forces vertically on the block. And while that doesn't seem like it'll obviously affect the acceleration of the block, it will, and I'll show you why. Looking at the free body diagram of the block, there's gravity downward, the weight of the block being mg. And the normal force is acting upward. Now, at first it's tempting to say that the normal force is going to be equal in magnitude to mg, but we don't want to allow this block to accelerate vertically. I want you to realize this pull force, if we pull forward at an angle slightly upward, this force has a component in both the y and the x directions. And so if this force is slightly vertical, that's going to decrease the normal force. Now, why do we care about that? Because of one simple idea, and that is that friction is given to us by mu Fn. So if we can decrease Fn, we can decrease friction. So by pulling this block at some angle, rather than just horizontally, we can actually cause the block to accelerate at a greater rate than if we just pulled horizontally. Ultimately, what's happening there is by pulling slightly up, we decrease the normal force, therefore we decrease the friction force backwards. So what I want to do is I want to look at the forces acting on this block in both the x and the y axes. So first, let's take a look at the x axis. We know the sum of all forces in the x axis on the block is going to cause the block to go through some acceleration, m a in the x axis. So let's go through and expand out what exactly is happening horizontally. We know there's going to be this pull force forward in the x-axis. That's going to be F cosine theta. In the opposite direction, we're going to have friction. That's going to cause our mass to accelerate horizontally. Now realize we can expand out this term for friction. We have to be a little bit careful about this. So we'll do this step by step and very slowly so we can all see what's happening. We know friction is mu Fn. In this case, it's kinetic. So F cosine theta minus mu K Fn is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x-axis. And it looks like nothing crazy is happening here so far, but I want you to realize now we need to take a look at exactly what Fn is. And so we need to stop looking in the x-axis for just a moment and take a look at what's happening in the y-axis to determine Fn, because it's not equal to mg. We know the sum of all forces in the y-axis needs to add up to zero, because we don't want this block to accelerate vertically. We want to pull this block only horizontally. We don't want it lifting up off of the ground or sinking down into the ground. That, that would just be weird. So, looking at our forces upward, there's Fn. There's also our pull force in the y-axis, which I'm just going to call Fy for the moment. And then downward, we're going to have mg. Those three forces need to add up to zero. 
expanding these out a little bit, really expanding out this term, we see Fn plus F sine theta minus mg equals zero. In solving for Fn, because remember, we want to take Fn and plug it in up here. In solving for Fn, we're going to find that Fn is equal to mg minus F sine theta. Now we can take this term and plug in and up here. This is going to give us F cosine theta minus mu k, our term for Fn, that is mg minus F sine theta, equals m times a in the x direction. So this is not the answer to the question or the problem, but this is getting us in the right direction here. What we need to do now is look at how do we optimize or maximize this acceleration. Realize what we're varying in this problem is theta. The mass, the pull force, the coefficient of kinetic friction, those are given to us as values. We're able to vary theta, and as a result, the acceleration will change. And so what we want to do is maximize A as a function of theta. So what we're going to do is rearrange this entire equation for A. And I'll do this over here. So the acceleration in the x-axis is equal to this. Okay. All we've done is just pulled our m over, I distributed out this negative, and we've got this function for a. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the derivative of this function with respect to theta. What we're going to do is we're going to say dA with respect to d theta is zero. We're taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. That's how we optimize, or in this case, maximize a function. So, looking at this entire thing as a polynomial. I'll rewrite this just a little bit differently so, so we can clean it up and maybe understand what's going on with the math a little bit better. And the x is f cosine theta over m minus mu k g plus mu k f sine theta over m. All I did was just broke up these three terms. Because this is a polynomial and we're taking the derivative with respect to theta, this is pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to wind up taking the derivative of theta here, theta here, and then in the middle we're taking the derivative with respect to theta, but there is no theta, so that term is going to go away, which is nice. So, the derivative of acceleration with respect to theta Remember, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is going to leave us with negative f over m sine theta minus the derivative of this term with respect to theta, that's 0, plus the derivative of sine, that's cosine. So I'm going to have mu k over m times f times cosine theta. Okay, now that we have this function, we set it equal to zero. And what we can do is turn around now and solve for theta. You'll see there's a theta in this term, there's a theta in that term. We want that to be a function of our other values. So let's split this up and clean this up a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to see. To do that, I'm going to pull this over the other side of the equal sign. We're left with... Okay, and what you'll see here, what you should see here first, is that we'll notice F and M cancel each other out. They're on both sides of the equal sign. 
and we're left with a sine theta and a cosine theta and a mu k. So we do a little more algebra. Mu k is equal to the tangent of theta. If I want to solve for theta, that means theta is the inverse tangent of mu k. So in all of this math, in all of the complexity of this problem, what this all boils down to is if we pull at an angle, theta, that is equal to the inverse tangent of mu, that's going to optimize the horizontal acceleration of this block. And that, kids, is what we call the optimally pulled block. That's all for now.